In this section we're going to talk about the concept of least common denominator. So remember when we're talking about the denominator of a fraction, we're talking about the bottom of the fraction. So um, I'm giving two definitions here that are equivalent to one another, but you might um, you know, find one more helpful to you than the other. The first is that the least common denominator of a set of fractions is the smallest number that each denominator divides into evenly. So we're looking for the smallest number that each bottom number of a fraction goes into evenly. The other way you could say this same definition is that the least common denominator of a set of fractions is the least common multiple of each denominator. So that brings in this concept of least common multiple that we worked on in section 3.1. And so just to give you an idea of why it is that we care about this idea of a least common denominator, is because when we get to adding and subtracting fractions, we're going to need all of our denominators, all the bottom numbers of our fractions, to be the same. And so the least common denominator is what we are going to make all of the denominators we're adding or subtracting turn into. And so that's where we're going with this, but we'll see exactly how that all plays out in the next section. So for now, we'll just work on finding the least common denominator for um, a set of fractions, and we're just going to stick to pairs of fractions here. So, um, as we go through here, we'll look at some different strategies for finding uh, the least common denominator. First of all, let's look at 3 fourths and 5 sixths. Now, just like with the least common multiple of two numbers, um, if you can just see what the answer is without doing much work, that's fine. So, you might look at 4 and 6 in the, in the first two fractions here and realize that 12 is the smallest number that both 4 and 6 go into evenly. Okay, and if you know that right off the bat, that's great. So the answer here is 12. Now if you need a more systematic approach, it's not immediately obvious to you, you're just going to use your strategy for finding the least common multiple of two numbers. And remember that is to prime factor and then remember the least common multiple of those numbers. But since we're talking about denominators, I'll call it the least common denominator, so we'll put a D here, LCD, is just going to be each of the prime factors you see multiplied together, but each one needs to be raised to the highest number of times it shows up. So this 2 shows up twice in 4 and once in 6, so you're going to need two twos. And then the 3 uh, shows up 0 times in 4, 1 time in 6, so you only need 1. And so 2 squared is, of course, 4, and so you can get it 12 that way as well. But again, if you just look at these and know 12 is the smallest number they both go into evenly, that's great. All right, so let's look at 1 sixth and 9 twentieths. Okay, so out of 6 and 20, if it is obvious to you what the answer is, fantastic. Let's go through our process here, though. We'll prime factor each number. And so the least common denominator is just going to be each factor I see, 2s, 3s, and 5s, raised to the highest number of times it appears for any number. So 2 appears once here, twice here, so I need 2 of them. 3 appears once here and 0 times here, so I just need 1. 5 appears once here, 0 times and 6, so I need 1. And so when we multiply all that together, we get 60. Now the other um, method I'll remind you of for finding the least common multiple, and in this case the least common denominator, is remember that you can also just take the larger number, which in this case is 20, and just look at its multiples and ask yourself for each multiple, does 6 go into it? So does 6 go into 20? No. Does 6 go into 40 evenly? No. So then 20 times 3 is 60. Does 6 go into 60 evenly? Yes. And so that's why 60 is the least common denominator. These last two, what I want to do is just show you kind of two uh, situations where maybe you can recognize 
that a short uh, that a shortcut can be taken. Um, and the first one, one seventh and nine twenty nineteen twenty first. If one of the numbers is a multiple of the other, then your least common denominator is just going to be the larger number. So twenty one is a multiple of seven, and so. Because of that, of course, 21 goes into itself, and then since 21 is a multiple of 7, of course, 7 does. So in that case, all you have to do is pick out the larger number, and that's your least common denominator. The other um, situation I want to show you is if you can recognize in 5 ninths and 2 thirteenths, if you can recognize that the uh, two denominators have nothing in common except one. And what I mean by nothing is no greatest common factor um, that's larger than one. Uh, if that's the case, then your least common denominator becomes really simple. You're just going to multiply the two numbers together. So all I have to do is take 13 times 9. And so we get 117. Because if they have nothing in common, and you prime factor both numbers out, then you're just going to take all the prime numbers from one times all the prime numbers from the other one, and that's how you're going to get your least common denominator. So you might as well just not even bother with the prime factoring step. So if they have nothing in common, just multiply them.